Hi everybody, welcome back. I'm the Stretch Professor, and today we're going to be doing another coaching session for Dylan. So as always, thank you very much, Dylan. Really appreciate it. We're going to be doing Miss Fortune, and this is going to be played at the Silver 5 ELO. Dylan is a Gold 5 player. I believe he got that primarily by playing support, and now he's practicing 80 carry um, for just a backup role for next season, or maybe a primary role, who knows. Uh, he wants he wants some 80 carry coaching, though, so we're going to do it. So first of all, we're going to be going over recommended runes, items, skill order. We'll watch the game itself. Uh, I'll take some notes as we watch it, and then we'll kind of recap the top five to ten things at the end of the game that I think Dylan could have done better to win. Um, if you want more content, you can always uh, catch out some more coaching videos here. Catch some more coaching videos uh, in this playlist or on the main channel, and you can find my individual champion guides here as well if you want some in-depth um, stuff about champions. I'm also running a membership system if you're interested in that. On that really quickly, Dylan is a member. It's just five dollars a month. You can come out and play with us on Tuesdays. It's a lot of fun. I play normals uh, with other members. Uh, we get in Discord, have a good time, share some laughs, try out some unorthodox champions that I don't usually get to play. Um, so it's a great time, and it's just uh, less than a quarter a day. You also, if you want a coaching session, you get ten percent off of that. Uh, you get to hang out in our members only Discord, get the games, and then um, you can vote on a straw poll to see which games that I play on members' night as well. So lots of benefits. Um, it's also just kind of fun just to support one of the only channels on YouTube that actually does a lot of in-depth content for support. So if you enjoy it and you have a quarter a day to spare and you want to support the content, come out and play with us. Be sure to check it out. There's a link right there in the PayPal. Um, it's just run through PayPal, so you can sign up anytime you want. If you need the money later, you can leave anytime you want. There's no contracts, no cancellation fees, no sign-up fees, none of that. Just straight up, as long as you want to support the channel, it's just $5 a month. Okay, if you would like a coaching session yourself, it's just $20. Great bargain for about an hour's worth of content um, to help you become a better player. So, it's all of that. If you want to access this Google Doc to kind of read along yourself, you'll find a link in the description. If you want to jump straight to the start of the game, you don't really care about the pregame that much, I'll have a link to that as well in the description. Okay, so let's look at uh, Miss Fortune here. So Miss Fortune has been nerfed quite a bit in the preseason, but I still think she's pretty good. She's actually still the number one uh, AD carry statistically on OP.GG, so even though she's been nerfed a lot, she's still really good. And what makes her good is she's just always relevant in team fights later on in the game. So she's oppressive early, and she's one of the best team fight AD carries in the game, as long as you can position properly and channel a full ult. Um, you can still dominate a game. So if you've never looked at Miss Fortune's stats before, they're kind of like eye-popping damage. Let's see, we can look right here. And I'm not going to spend, and this, this isn't a full-out misfortune guide, so I'm not going to spend uh, forever looking at it. But I just want to show you a couple of numbers here really quick and why she is almost always a really good solo queue champion, especially at, like, silver and bronze, where people won't seek you out and you can position really well. Regardless of kind of what the beta is, she's still going to be good. She's best with lethality items, and she's best with the sorcery tree. Um, but she can get a uh, critical strike. I don't recommend that a lot of the time, but that is an alternative build route that you can go if they nerf lethality to the ground. It's not nerfed to the ground. It's just on the weak side compared to crit right now, but it's still something that you should be going on her. So the main thing that makes her relevant later on in the game is she gets 12, 14, 16 waves that deal 75% of your AD per wave and 20% of your AP. And you can crit on that, so Infinity Edge does add crits, which is very tempting, but the um, penetration on that is also very good, so making sure that it does a higher percentage of its total damage. Look at these numbers. Look at these numbers. So it's 900% of your AD. 900% of your AD at level 6. So if you have 100 AD, that's 900 damage at level 6 on everybody that sits in this. Not one person, not two people, potentially five people um, if you have the right kind of team comp for it. So that's really, really good. And historically, she's very good with hard CC champions that can hold people still. Coincidentally, that's what's really popular right now. So she's very good with Leona, with Shen, uh, Thresh, Alistar, all of these champions that have hard engage CC. She's really, really good with those champions. So she's, I mean, she's serviceable with something like a Lulu or a Janna, but she's really best with champions that can hold people still while she just channels her ult. So that is what will always make her a good sort of solo queue pick, especially in Bronze and Silver. All right, so yes, Twitch, Vayne, Ezreal, those are all kind of the hot stuff right now, but people are going to start banning Vayne a lot. She's already on, I ban her every game that I play right now, and... 
the other team bans her a lot too. So Vayne's going to be banned out a lot. Uh, and she's pretty good against Twitch early game. It's harder to punish. Um, I mean, I'm not going to go too far into that, but it's really hard to punish right now in 80 carry video. I explained this a lot. Like, check out the last video with Dylan that I did where he plays Tristana. I go over the Relic Shield build and, like, what's hot right now with that and why um, that makes poke champions like Misfortune a little bit less valuable early. But unlike Jen, who also is kind of a poke early game domination champion, um, she actually converts to a really good late game team fight champion because of this ult. Jen's ult is not very good in a team fight. They're not going to let you sit there and channel it. And it. Even if they did, it wouldn't even come close to this amount of damage that you could put out. So that's what makes Misfortune transition much better from early game through the mid game with your lethality into the late game. So she's good at all stages of the game. And that's what differentiates her from other early game bullies like Jen, like Caitlyn, even like Draven to some extent. I mean, Draven is still really, really good if he gets ahead. But she's just so consistent because you can always press R. Any champion, especially bronze and silver, where you can just press R and have a huge impact is always going to be useful. So this right here is what makes her very relevant and very strong, even despite all the nerfs. She's still going to be very, very strong, okay? Especially at level 6. Like, yes, it does get bigger, you know, 10-50% uh, is stronger than 900, but this initial 900 is just, like, obscenely strong. Obscenely strong early on. Okay? And it's on 120 second cooldown, so it's a really big... Um, really big ability on a very low cooldown especially because the items you're going to get lethality items and black cleaver are going to lower that cooldown so this is going to be up a lot so other things that of course make her useful are um, she gets nice rotation movement off of strut it does give you some bonus attack speed frankly you're not going to be sitting there attacking that much with her you're just going to be channeling your ult in fights but it is really nice if it comes down to it if you need to finish off the last couple of people um then having that bonus attack speed is good. Now, she's not good in duels most of the time, right? So if you're trying to duel someone like uh, Vayne or even a Twitch who opens up on you from invisibility, uh, you're probably going to lose that. You know, she's a caster AD carry. She's best when, like I said, other people hold someone still for you and you just get to channel your ult. But that is something she can do in a pinch. But the big one is she can rotate, get back to lane, get to some of the action... Um, she can move around the map a lot faster than most other AD carries, so that's good. Uh, Make It Rain is actually surprisingly has quite a bit of good utility later in the game because it has such a long range. You can slow people to make it very easy for your support or your jungler or whomever to hit those skill shots. So if you slow them down with Make It Rain, it makes it very hard to dodge a Leona E or a Leona Ult or a Thresh Hook or a Blitzcrank Hook. So this makes her very good with the people she's already good with. Right, which is the hard CC champions, but now it makes it very easy for them to hit their skill shots if you just put the E on them. That's very good. It's also pretty good lane harassment, but keep in mind it does cost a lot of mana early, and you're not going to be getting any sort of mana regen items as misfortune. Some people have tried out Essence Reaver on her. Not a huge fan of that build. It's okay, but I will. I would rather have the the without the items that I'm going to recommend, and I'll explain why here in just a little bit. But that's part of what makes her good. And then, of course, her signature in lane is double up. You need to constantly be trying to hit these Qs, bounce them off of minions to hit enemies, and it just does just a disgusting amount of damage. It's 100% of your AD plus 100, and then it critically strikes if it kills the minion. So it does double damage. So level one, let's say that you have like 80 AD. Right, so 100% of your AD, so it deals 100 damage. If it crits, it's 200 damage, level 1. 200 damage. You may not quite have 80 AD, but it's going to be somewhere between 150 and 200 damage. So that's going to chunk somebody out for like at least a quarter of their health, level 1, if you're bouncing these properly. So that is disgusting amount of poke. That's a lot of poke, and it's very cheap. I mean, it's only 43 gold. So that's really nice. And then you get the uh, double up damage dealt to him as well. And it applies Comet. So, very, very nice. So, she has good early game pressure and good late game scaling with her bullet time. Okay, Dylan probably knows that. <laughs> but just for other people out here that maybe haven't watched a lot of Misfortune, you don't really know why she's strong or, like, how to play her, that's one of the key factors. Okay, so to complement all of this, you want Comet. Um, you have a lot of abilities that can hit him in lane. Remember, Comet is AD damage as well, and it scales very well off of Lethality. So because it counts as AD damage, it scales off of Lethality. And that's what makes something like Electrocute really good as well, um, with champions that use Electrocute in the mid lane, is because Lethality applies to it. So that means that it does a lot more base damage. It scales very nice into the mid game. So you want to do Comet. 
Uh, mana flow bands very good. As I said, you're not going to get a lot of mana items and by a lot, I mean any mana items in lane. And so mana flow um, helps helps you generate a little bit of extra mana. Celerity is good. Gives you some extra movement speed. It's always nice for repositioning to get good quality ults off. And then Scorch does some very nice harass in lane. Now you will note that three of these have been nerfed in the preseason. And Sorcery has also been nerfed to give less AD. So they have hit this build pretty hard. Um, but it's still legit. It's still good. In secondary, I would go Taste of Blood. And after commenting on the Tristana video earlier today that Dylan submitted as well. I really am going to start recommending Zombie Ward, I think, especially for Silver and Lower, because you just can't count on your support to even buy a Sightstone. Like, we had a Soraka that didn't have a Sightstone in that last Tristana video at, like, 35 minutes into the game. Not a, Didn't have a Sightstone. Uh, as a Soraka. It's not like she's playing a Zyra that's, like, 10-0 and 0 or something. It's, like, as a Soraka, you know, like, the quintessential, like, healer, supporter type of support, you know? Um just to use some excellent vocabulary there, yeah, it still doesn't have sidestep. So I think that Zombie Ward is great, and the reason why, like, you're obviously not going to be sweeping a lot of wards, but when your one-minute wards time out, you get an extra ward for three minutes, which is so good at, you know, giving you vision and allowing you to play more aggressively. And you obviously want to be playing aggressively with Misfortune early because she has a great early game. So I think Zombie is definitely worth it. Um, and then I would just keep the yellow ward all game and just don't even worry about blue trinket most of the time because that's going to give you so much more vision on the map over time with those zombie wards because you basically, your yellow trinket turns into, um, you know, like, uh, four minute wards, right? You get one minute off the normal one, it dies, it zombies, three more minutes. So you get four minute wards, which is almost like having two sightstone wards, not quite a sightstone ward lasts two and a half minutes, but these are four minute wards. So that's like a ward and a half. It's like a Sightstone Ward and a half. So that's a really good bargain for a zombie. And all you're giving up for that, Eyeball Collection is nice, getting the extra AD. It takes a while to ramp up. I'm just, I'm starting to favor zombie, just so that you have more vision control in Bronze and Silver, where people just don't highly um, prioritize that. Okay, so the items that you want to go, Ghost Blade, Dust Blade, Black Cleaver, IE. The reason that you go Ghost, Ghost Blade early, that's going to give you some more mobility. That's something that Misfortune desperately needs, because she doesn't have any escapes. If people get on her, she's going to die. So having that is nice. It also gives you the penetration, and it also gives you... Um, uh, CDR, which is good. So yeah, so it gives you 40 out-of-combat movement speed, which once again complements Misfortune's kit. She already has great out-of-combat movement speed, so it lets you rotate around the map, um, get to key objectives, even split push, and then escape a little bit faster. That's really nice. The lethality is very good, especially early game. And then it has respectable attack damage and cooldown reduction. So, And then, of course, it has the 20% movement speed for 6 seconds on a 45-second cooldown. So Ghost Blade is just almost always the item that you want to rush early on. Very, very strong. Pretty cost-efficient for the most part. Um, I mean, the 20% active turns it into, like, you know, about 116% efficiency. So it's it's pretty good. And the key here is it has a really nice build path that builds out all, like all long swords. And I was just talking about this in the Tristana video about how it's such a pain in the butt to have to get that BF sword and build all the way to Infinity Edge before you hit any kind of power spike. Yomu's is a much smoother curve. It builds out of all long swords, and it's only twenty nine hundred gold instead of thirty four hundred gold. So that's going to allow you to hit your power spike faster than um, Infinity Edge using. 80 carries. So that just allows you to just really, you know, slam your foot on the gas and just force action early on while they're still floundering, trying to get their, you know, BF sword into static shiv or whatever. You're going to be hitting the gas and really just coming at them with a uh, ghost blade. You're going to hit your power spike much faster and you should be able to leverage that power to get major advantage in lane. Another item you could rush is a uh, dust blade. It's similar it's also 2,900 gold, also 55 attack damage, 10% cooldown, same amount of lethality. Um, but whenever you go invisible, then you get this extra proc. So this, ha if you want to do this, you need to get a control ward and control a bush in lane is the best way to proc this. This does not have an internal cooldown. So after you hang out in a bush, then you just pop out of the bush and use this. Your next basic attack against an enemy champion will have enhanced effects. Now I'm pretty sure you can use a Q, bounce it off a minion, and then once it hits the enemy, it's going to proc... Dustblade. So this gives you some extreme trading power in lane. 
because you can just go invisible in a bush, pop outside of the lane once you have your uh, dust blade ready to go, and then uh, just Q onto a minion and bounce it onto them, and it'll proc this dust blade. Um, lasts for five seconds, so you have five seconds to hit them with it. And the ranged champions are going to deal 45 to 300 on hit physical damage. But it doesn't apply to the slow. But still, even once you complete this, you know, around level like 8 or something, getting the extra 150 damage off your Q, which is already going to do an insane amount of damage. Now, this portion won't get the crit if you kill the minion. But it'll still hit him, you know, with the uh, Q damage. It's going to hit him for five or 600 probably. So it's, it's a lot of damage. So, I mean, pretty much... Like, how this would work is you would just walk out of a bush with Dustblade, queue off a minion, hit them with it, press your E to slow them, and then just channel your ult. And if they don't flash, they're dead. Um, so, it's just, it's a lot of power in lane. The problem with this is you give up the mobility of Ghostblade, right? So, you're not going to be able to move around the map nearly as quickly. Um, you're not going to be able to reposition to get ults off. Because sometimes in fights, especially if they have a lot of gap-closing champions... You know, you're going to have to stay away from that Jarvan. You're going to have to stay away from, you know, Cossacks who might be trying to chase you. So just being able to run away, reposition, allow your tanks to crowd control and contain the threats, and then pressing your ult at the right time to just clear everybody out is what you want to do. So having that mobility from Yomus is just invaluable on an immobile champion like uh, Misfortune. So I think you still have to go Yomus first, but if you're just absolutely abusing your lane... Um, you might be able to go Dustblade early. But I still think Yomu's into Dustblade is where you want to be. And that'll give you 20% CDR. Then the final item that I recommend is a classic on Misfortune. That's Black Cleaver. Now, Black Cleaver doesn't have a lot of AD on it. Um, but it does shred a lot of armor. So it's going to shred. And this has been nerfed over time too. So it's going to shred 24% uh, of their armor. And it gives you that, that key 20% cooldown reduction, which is very nice. So that'll put you at 40% cooldown reduction. Um, it does give you some movement speed too, so it allows you to kite a little bit better. Um, which complements kind of your ghost blade movement also if you're trying to kite away from people. But mainly that 24% shred, not just for you, but for your entire team as well, is really classic and a very strong combination on Misfortune. The 400 health is kind of nice. It means you're not going to get zeroed out as easily. Uh, but it's a relatively low damage item on a lot of AD carries, but because Misfortune's ultimate, every single wave of the ultimate procs this on an entire enemy team and increases the damage of the ultimate itself, is really, really nice. So I think that that's what you would want to build. And then after that, you can kind of decide. Like a Last Whisper item, especially um, Mortal Reminder, is very good because it puts the uh, healing debuff on everybody. So it really crushes like a Soraka who wants to ult in the middle of a fight or like a Janna who's trying to channel her ult. Um, it's really nice for that. But yeah, that's that's the trinity of items that you want. You want uh, Ghostblade, Dustblade, Black Cleaver. You could also go Infinity Edge because remember your ult can crit. So that's just for the huge damage if they don't have a lot of armor. Um, you could even go Infinity Edge like as early as after Ghostblade. If you're just like really snowballing super hard and they just have a bunch of squishy champions, then you could even go Infinity Edge after Ghostblade if you really wanted to. But I think that Dusk and Cleaver are definitely good options. If you have, you know, three AD champions on your team, which is likely these days, um, then Black Cleaver is the option. Even sometimes two good AD champions on your team, Cleaver would be really good. But you want to max your Q for the poke in lane, and also it's just a pretty good trading tool later on. It resets your auto attack. It's nice. W for the mobility and the attack speed steroid, and then E is just kind of your, you know, point click slow. You don't need to put that many points in that as an AD carry. As a support, that's what you max, but as AD carry, you want to go for that Q. Okay, and we've got another uh, YouTube version of this. Dylan likes to submit these on YouTube, which is nice. Let's go ahead and check this out. So this was uh, a couple of patches ago. It's on YouTube, though, so that's why we're able to access it. It was a couple of patches ago. Um, and Dylan's been very chill about this with all the family stuff going on in December and the holiday season. And he's uh, been playing some you know, World of Warcraft lately uh, in the off season here. Hopefully he'll come back to us in Season 8. I, I, he will. He'll, he'll at least come out and hang out. If you ever watch Members Night on Tuesdays, Dylan's there almost all the time hanging out. 
So he's been very cool about this, but Misfortune has been nerfed since this came out a little bit. So if he just like has eye popping, like insane damage, it'll be a little bit less if you play it at the start of season eight, but it'll still be really good. Okay. Um, I don't remember if this was pre or post airy nerf, but right now you want to go Comet rather than airy. And then... Like, you can go uh, Triumph Coup de Gras. That is a good build. I just... I get... Because Misfortune has so much lane dominance, I guess you can get away with doing that instead of Taste of Blood. But Zombie Wards... <laughs> I just feel like it's so good with Yellow Trinket and Silver and Bronze because you just can't count on your team to have good... Uh, Good vision control. Sorry, I was reading the chat there and kind of zoning out. <laughs> You're right, it is all AD, which sucks. They do have two tanks. Well, Alawi can build tank. Lulu's a pretty subpar choice. I would have really liked to see Zyra there. Or like Brand or just something to add a little more pressure with Misfortune and also to have an AP threat on your team. But you can't really uh, control that. Lulu just has... Virtually no synergy with Misfortune. Misfortune's not an auto-attacking AD carry. Um, I still think this is good enough to play, though. It's still good enough to play because you're going to have enough access to Vagar and Kog'Maw. I think you can win it. I think you can win it because they don't have very much peel. Like all, I guess Vagar's Cage can peel and then like maybe Warwick, but Warwick's going to engage. So I think that Talon and Jarvan should be able to get on the Cog and Vagar, and then eventually you can just whittle away at Warwick and Lowey. But this is going to be an issue because Misfortune's not great against tanks because she builds Lethality. And she's not an auto-attack-based AD carry. Like, auto, when I'm saying auto-attack-based AD carries, I'm talking about things that just attack really fast. She does have her W, but she doesn't have things that really give her a lot of extra on-hit, like Vein Silver Bolts or Twitch's Poison. Um... And she doesn't have like the same kind of attack speed steroids as something like a Tristana or Kog'Maw. Like those are all kind of auto attack 80 carries that just deal a lot of damage, but they just get to sit there and right click. Misfortune's not that. She's more of a caster, channel your ult. So this will definitely be a cleaver game. You know, you might even consider just uh, skipping Dustblade and just go uh, Ghostblade, Cleaver, um, Mortal Reminder, Infinity Edge, this game. Just skip Dust, because you don't want you don't want to do too much Lethality. Because they are going to stack all armor. So you want that big penetration. You want the uh, percentage penetration. You want the Cleaver plus the uh, Mortal Reminder. Speed this up a little bit here. Um, drop an E in there. No, auto. Oh, okay, you got him. That to say, so one thing that you always want to do with your Q is you auto and then Q after that. While your auto attack animation's down. That's the trick. So it's not an auto attack reset, but it's similar. Yeah, auto and then Q. I think you can get them. They use their stuff. Okay, that's fine. Um, and right now, as I talked about with the Tristana video, you need to be going Relic Shield early and then building that in at Targons later. It's just too strong not to do right now. But, you know, when this video was recorded, um, that wasn't the case. But now, going into Season 8, that's what you'll want to do. Okay, yeah, get the angle, get a Q on him. When he goes up for a minion. Okay. 
Okay, that's a good try. You almost got the angle on him. You really don't get penalized for missing that either. It's on such a low cooldown. A lot of times you won't get penalized, so yes. I would step up and just, every time that's off cooldown, I just go up and punish him. Just try to hit a Q on him. More. More Qs. Even if you're not killing a minion with it, just bouncing it off of them is still pretty good. Heal. Heal him. Uh, she's going to give up first blood. Probably. Get barred. Get barred. You got him. Flash auto Q. Okay. Run. Pop potion. Good. No, 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 no. Don't. 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 Oh, God. Ah. Uh. I guess. I would have kept running. Like, the issue there is... The issue there is he's... I, I don't know. It's debatable. I'm always on the on the side of don't trade kills. And the reason is he's going to scale a lot harder than you do. I mean, you can use that gold earlier to pressure him more. I guess the wave is pushing towards you. So he's missing a lot more CS than you're going to miss. Um, I don't know. It's okay. I thought it was really risky, though. I thought he did have a lot of minions attacking him, and I assume that's probably why you turned on him. I probably would have just reset, though. I just wouldn't risk giving him gold. I mean, if you're the superior player... Like, my opinion on it is, you know, I know a lot of people think, well, I need to get all the gold so I can hard carry. And that's true to an extent, but I just wouldn't give them any gold. Like, that's another way of carrying. It's just like, don't give them trades. Get clean kills. But, it's fine. But you have to use that advantage now. Like, Kog'Maw is going to be much faster to getting his items. Yeah, you need to be positioning... And using your Q a lot more. You have a lot of mana. Like, if you would have just landed one more Q on him somewhere before that fight started, then you would have had a clean kill on him, and he wouldn't have killed you back. It's just one more Q, and you would have had it. So it's like, every time it's off cooldown... And don't use your E, either. As AD carry, just don't. Because your... If you'll notice, your E costs almost double your Q. Like, the E is two Qs. And it doesn't do any damage as a uh, 80 carry misfortune. So just only use your mana on Qs. Um uh, I would use it I would use that in lane. Like use that because you're able to be careful Warwick's up up river. I would use this like right here. Because you can pressure them out so hard, you're so far ahead and you have so much more kill threat than they do right now. Yeah, you got him. Q. Okay, good. You have so much... Okay, you can fight this. Kite backwards. Auto attack. Yeah, auto attack and kite. Auto kite. One more auto and then Q and you got him. Okay, keep going. Okay, good. Okay, good. Um. Yeah, go ahead and E the wave right here. E it as soon as it comes up. Just get that in there and go buy. Okay. No, buy, 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 buy. Go back, go back, go back. No, 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 no. This is something that happened in the Tristana game, too. You gotta get out. You have no mana. Misfortune has to have mana. I think you're being too greedy here. I would use that control ward also, like I said, to shut off this bush. You're being way too greedy here. I know, like, you're not gonna, I don't think you're gonna get to the item that you want to get to anyways. Like, Bard, in theory, could come up here and deny this back. And you're gonna let Kog'Maw sit here and free farm. So he's gonna get a wave for free, where you could have just backed. You don't need that free wave as much as he does. Ghostblade, Ghostblade, no. Uh... I mean, yeah, Dustblade does let you keep slaughtering them, which is nice, but... I would still Ghost Blade. It's just so much safer. It also lets you run them down and kill them later.
If you're going Dustblade, you definitely want to control those side bushes with your control ward. As you can see, Lulu's not warding anything really, so... And not only so they don't see you, but so you get procs off of your Dustblade. Because if they have the bush warded and you go in the bush, you're not going to get Dustblade procs. So, you do have enough lane pressure to go for the Dustblade because you can keep that control ward in that bush. Um... But you're never going to get Dustblade procs. Unless, uh... There you go, yeah, good. Unless you have a control ward in that bush. Okay, yeah, 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 you got the Vagar. Watch out for the stun. Watch out for the stun. Careful, E that, E that. Okay, good. You're getting chased by Warwick. This is getting bad. I think you can... You might have to flash that. Just flash, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Land your auto. Auto before you cube. Use an E there, use an E there. Slow him down. Auto. Okay. Oh, perfect. Double kill. Oh, uh, you can... No, 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 no. Uh... Okay, good. A little, little nervous about that, but Lulu did have the, uh, the, <laughs> the E. You gotta hit him with the easy there. Okay, you need to go run Kog'Maw into his tower and then go back and buy. Careful. I know you feel strong, you just got all those kills, but you haven't spent that gold yet, so you're not that far ahead of Kog'Maw right now. Once you buy, you will be, yes. But right now, he could still potentially... Okay. Okay, so go put him in the tower and go buy. You need to buy ASAP. Try to level up your abilities with um, buttons rather than mouse. You can. I did that for gears. I leveled up with mouse. It just once you level it up with buttons, it does help. Especially like when you level up in the middle of a fight. That's when it really matters. So you just want to go ahead and get that in your muscle memory so that you're ready. Mechanically, when you level up in fights and you've got to level that up really quickly. Dustblade, uh, Dirk. Okay, control ward. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I'm going to say control lane bush. Yeah, so you always... The one thing that I've noticed kind of mechanically is you want to make sure that you land your auto attack and then Q. Because if you just Q, then a lot of times they're going to get away before you get that second auto attack in because of the Q animation. They're going to be able to get away, like close a little bit of, or create a little bit of space. So that's why you want to auto first, and then once you start that Q animation, even if they, you know, get away, it's going to finish the animation. Even if they flash away or whatever. So you just want to think about the Q like an auto attack reset. Okay. No. Auto Q. No. Uh, it worked out because he missed his stun. But he could have stunned you in theory. Okay, good. I mean, I'm trying to point out stuff here. Obviously, you're completely steamrolling this game, which is great. <laughs> but there will be games where you won't steamroll, and so obviously you're not, you know, I'm trying to help you out. I mean, you don't want a coaching session where I'm like, yeah, man, good job, great. You know, I will say good job, but that's not that's not helpful, right? It's just, you know, it's just a cheerleader. Like, I like to cheer. Yay, go Dylan. But at the same time, you, I want to give you some constructive feedback for the games that aren't this much of a steamroll. Okay, now keep in mind, though, and this is – very important to remember, your team is not that far ahead, right? Because everyone else is failing really hard. If you took yourself out of the game right now, it would be 5 to 10. So every other lane is losing. And Kog'Maw is going to outscale you. So, you know, be happy. You know, get excited that you're ahead, but you got to keep pressing forward. you got to keep thinking. You can't get complacent. You can't get lazy here. you got to keep making good decisions. Because you're going to have to carry these guys. Because you have all the gold. So you have to be the one who has the influence. There you go. Look at that damage. That's nice. Uh... Where's mid? You gotta watch out for mid. Talon's coming. Yeah, EM, 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 EM. 
Ian. There you go. Wait on him to flash. There, now you can channel your ult on him. Perfect. Great. Picture perfect. Yeah, use the E to force the flash. <laughs> and finish him off. Man, you're like a billionaire status this game. Mega rich. Alright, yeah. Ward that. Make sure you auto first. Run from her. Run from her. Yeah. Good. Good decision. You don't have any mana. Uh, tab more also. I mentioned this in the Tristana game. If you want to tab. I'm recording a lot of these at once. So, you know, obviously you haven't watched the Tristana video yet. The uh, newest one. There was one earlier. But you need to get out of there. Get out of there. You do have blue buff, but... They have three people bottom. They want to do dragon, so be aware of that. But you need to tab right now to see who's strong and who's weak on your team. You're probably you're gonna flash, flash immediately. Okay, good. Hmm. Ah. Uh, you do need to spend that gold, but yeah, ghost blade. You need a tab and see how much armor they have. I mean, I doubt they have a lot. Warlick's probably going damage first. He's probably going to go, like, you know, Tiamat first. That's their second Drake, though, isn't it? I don't know. You need a tab to see these things. Okay, she clearly has a lot of armor. Careful, don't let her dunk you. Ward that. Ward it. You need to ward these bushes so you get a clearer picture of her. Okay, good. Push up, push up bot, push up bot. Uh, I think you're wasting time here. Do not let, do not walk over here. Do not walk over here. Like you're trying to kill this Vagar, just push the lane. He's probably just gonna come this way and just meet you right here, would be my guess. But y'all are just face checking. Yeah, there he is. But y'all are just face checking a lot of that stuff. And he could have just been randomly sitting in a bush. Like, maybe this was warded. They just did dragons. There's a decent chance this is warded. And he, like, sees you walking through here. And then just decides to wait in that bush. Just sit there and wait on you. You don't know because there's no vision there. Because Lulu's really not warding that much. So, I would have just pushed bottom and forced Vagar to come over there and stop you. And then you can rotate over to mid once you see Vagar. Okay, so she has Ninja Tabi. He's dead. Okay, maybe not. Vagar didn't quite have enough juice yet. Ult that, ult that, ult that. Okay, good. Yeah, use your strut. Good. Good, ghost blade. Yeah, great. Nice. Yeah, you just want to uh, just make sure you're auto attacking and then queuing. You did it there in that fight. Mm. 
Yep, Cleaver. I mean, it's not a lot. Uh, <laughs> you're playing a lot of this very me mechanically very well here. I mean, maybe this is just a celebration. I just want to support TSP and just show off a good game on the channel. I will take that. I will take that. But I'm going to try to give you, you know, at least some um, useful advice. Yeah, kill that, kill that, kill that. Dustblade does give you nice vision control. You know, Dustblade, if you go Zombie Ward, maybe it would be worth going Dustblade early because then that would give you a lot more vision. When you get to Blackout procs. I forgot about that. Right now, I think before the nerfs to Coup de Gras and um, Triumph, this was the build, but... I don't know, we'll see. Yeah. Eum, ult. Okay, I guess you don't need to. I would have just walked up and pressed E and then ulted. Uh, that's a bit ambitious. You did force his ult. He could turn around and... Okay, I guess not. <laughs> you are, like, ridiculously fed here, so... Remember, your fedness doesn't really make you a lot more durable. Like, Vagar can still potentially, you know, zero you out with his ult once he gets an item or two. So, yeah, you gotta keep snowballing, though. Not a problem. Just keep in mind, the rest of your team is behind them, right? So, without you in the game, it would be uh, 10 to 14. So if you ever die, it's really, really bad. Because your team loses, like, all of its gold. You know, your team loses, like, 66% of its gold. Which is nice to be really fed, but you just have to be very, very careful that you never die. Because, like, this is where trading is definitely not worth. So yeah, just make sure you don't die. Um, yeah, I'd probably just go Infinity Edge here. You're so far ahead, and they just don't have armor yet, probably, because you're just ridiculously ahead. I mean, you can't really go wrong with... I wouldn't go... Yeah, right there, right there. Yeah, I was about to say, I'd get the healing debuff one for uh, Illawi. That's fine. You know, Mortal Reminder's fine. I just think that... I don't know. It is an all AD, right? This is an all AD team, so I guess going ahead and getting that mortal before um, before they get their armor items is probably good because they're going to get them. That's probably a good call. I just think I would just I'd just be tempted just to spike it on them with Infinity Edge here. It's because you're just snowballing so hard. Why is she, like, looking away? Why she... <laughs> That's weird. This is going to be really dicey. Um, you need a tab. Like, who's strong on their team? Who do you need to be looking out for? How strong is Vagar? You may actually want to get a um, Quicksilver Sash here. I didn't think about that, but... I think Quicksilver might have even been better than Mortal Reminder. Because if Vagar catches you with a cage at this point, surely that's going to be a kill. Definitely get it after you finish Mortal. Looks like he got slowed off of that. I thought that they nerfed Dustblade before then. Maybe they didn't. I thought they nerfed that about Dustblade a while ago, but it looked like it just applied the slow. Maybe that was the Talon Dustblade proc off of it. I don't know. Yeah, because they nerfed that like back in 7-something. 7-14, something like that. Ghostblade, run him down. You're almost out of mana, so be careful with that. Grab this and rotate. Uh... 
Yeah, three are dead. Yeah, go get Baron. Go get Baron. Go get Baron. Back up, back up. Get out of there. Oh, he's dead. Forget it. Go bottom. Bottom, 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 bottom. Zen's dead. Zen's dead. Go bottom. You guys aren't going to be able to do Baron. You don't have enough time. Like, once Zen overstays, just go bottom. Now, they might go do Baron here. Yeah, you should have gotten that second tower bottom. Like, Baron's a decent option if everyone moves immediately and leaves. I'll go Quicksilver Sash here. So Baron's a decent option if everybody leaves immediately, but if they don't, like, as soon as you see Zen stay there, just run over to bottom, because you had a big wave on the bottom tier, too. You could take that. And then if you had to, you could run back over to, um... And defend Baron if he needed to. But you gotta remember, Misfortune's very fast. With her W and Ghostblade. Like, you just zip around the map. So you could easily get over there and take that tier 2. And if you had to run after that, or if you had to go defend Baron, you could do it. Push this up and go get the tier 2 top. You got a decent... Well, you don't have a good wave up there, but it is pushed close to the tower. Uh, be careful with this Talon. He's going to bait you into bad situations. That's probably warded right there. Don't Baron. Don't Baron. Go get go get Bot. Bot's got a wave. They're not going to get Baron right now. They're too pushed in. Yeah. wasted ult. You did zone him off the tower, but you're so... St no, no, get back off of Warwick. Don't let Warwick get you. Watch out for Lally. Okay, good. Uh, let Zen die. He just suicided. Okay. Um, if you can get this, get it, and then r run. Well, I got. I guess he got out of there. Zara's so powerful. Well, he said I want to die, so... I guess he was working on it. Hey, thanks for the sub. I appreciate it. Y'all are about to maybe throw here. You need to get out. You don't have any mana. Run. Ghostblade, out. Out. Run. Watch out for that. Yeah, just run out that way. It's fine. Let's get out of there. Morwick's going to clean everybody up. Potentially. Mm, that's fine. I mean, they're pushed in enough off two inhibitors. They're not likely to do Baron, but it's really dicey when Warwick's got the scent on you. Ah, uh, Quicksilver. Quicksilver. I think Death Dance is a bit greedy here. You already have 40% CDR, so the CDR is unnecessary. I mean, obviously it's not going to matter too much what you build here, but in terms of just, like, perfect items... Well, I don't know. I mean, you could still lose from this point. It's possible. But for the sake of perfect itemization, you need a Quicksilver Sash against Vagar. And against Warwick at this point. If Warwick ever catches you with an ult, or Vagar catches you with a stun, you're gone. I would be willing to bet that Lulu does not have a Mikhail's right now. Mikhail's won't even save you from Warwick. That could get you out of a Vagar cage, but you don't want to count on that. You want to just get Quicksilver Sash. Like, you already do enough damage. Yeah, don't don't worry about it. Just don't talk to him about it. No, 
Just push it. You're doing the right thing. Just tell him to back up. Not a problem. Uh, they got a dragon off of it because your team's just screwing around. Run. Don't. Run. 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 Yeah, if he stuns you into Vagar Cage. Oh. It's scary. The rest of their team wasn't there, which is good for you guys, but you need to just push up middle. Get middle up. Q auto, Q auto. There's an ult, 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 ult. Nice. Don't forget that Quicksilver Sash into uh, Mercurial, that does give you lifesteal, which is what you want off of Death Stance anyways. It does give you slightly less AD than Death Stance, but not much, and it gives you magic resist, which is very good against Vagar. So, like the way that you die is Vagar stuns you and ults you. But, you know, you're so far ahead it didn't matter. But so yeah, so I mean that was probably the best game that I've seen of yours, and I think you even told me in your email you're just like, hey, I just want to show off this really cool game that I had, which is good. It's fine, good celebration, good to have some good games in there. Um, but once again, I'm just gonna do the best that I can to help you, just with general information, like not general, but like. Stuff that'll help you in games where you're not that far ahead. Okay, so... Okay, so use the control ward in the lane bush if you're not lane dominant, if your support's not already doing that, especially if you want to go dust blade. So putting it in that back tri bush is good. That'll help you from getting flanked a little bit. And it does clear out, you know, vision so that they can't ward that. But let me pull up a league map here. Um Gonna let me load that or not? Whatever, we'll load this one. Uh, that's really terrible quality. Whatever, that's fine. Do that one. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, there we go. Jeez, that's not gonna let me. Okay. Anyways, they're not going to be able to get position to ward that tri bush because you're pushing them so far into their lane that they're not going to be able to. Um, there we go. So, this, I guess this will work. They're not going to be able to get position because you're pushing them so far in that their support's not going to be able to go over here and ward that tri bush, anyways. So, one of the main reasons you would ward this tri if you're on blue side is to deny vision so that your jungler can come in that way and gank, right? Like, that's one of the key reasons to do it. But they're so far pushed in, number one, your jungler's not going to be able to have this wraparound route, and number two, they're not going to be able to get in there and ward that anyways. So, yeah, and if you're this far pushed in, like, yeah, if they come around here, you're going to see them in the tri bush, but most likely, once they get there, it's too late. They're just going to wrap all the way around, and they're already going to be behind you. Even if you see it, you're not going to be able to do a lot about it as misfortune. So yeah, it does give you some advantages, but I think if you want to ward anywhere with a control ward, if you have that much lane domination, you would ward here. If you want to ward river bush, and that'll stop them from being able to ward over this wall to check this out. So then it, it serves the same function where now your AD carry can still wrap through here, um, but it allows you to advance your vision a little bit more and deny vision in this river, at least for this part of the river, so that you can rotate up and maybe rotate and go get a dragon, or maybe rotate and get 
uh, mid lane or just even get deep wards, you know, allow your support rather to get deep wards in here. So, you know, I think just moving your wards up if you're pushed up is going to be really nice and it doubles if giving you vision in the river, which is a lot more helpful than vision back here. However, like I said, another option is to put it in this bush right here and just hang out in that bush and just last hit, you know, from the bush. And that also allows you to proc your dust blade more often because you just sit in that bush for one second. Boom, you got a dust blade proc. They can't ever go up to the wave. And they can't clear it out because you have so much lane domination unless their jungler comes down. So I would use the control ward in that situation, especially with Misfortune, especially if you want to go dust blade in the lane. Even with other AD carries, though, I would move it up to here and ward here. Like, you should have it warded here, and then your support should ward here, ideally, and just shut them out of vision. Or your support could donate a control ward over here, or even control ward near the dragon after you control ward that, and you can get the entire river. Um, you know, an ideal scenario there would be, you know, like, you pink this, your support pinks this, like, your jungler pinks this, and then your mid laner pinks this, or something, and then you have the entire river, like, on lockdown, so that all of you can just run up and down this river. But anyways, in your situation, I would definitely ward that. Um, so make sure you land the auto first and then Q, and that'll make sure that that Q animation doesn't allow them to get too far away from you where you can't land that second auto. And the thing is, like after your auto, you have downtime anyways, right? So it's not an auto attack reset per se, but you know, after you auto, you have to wait that extra second or however long before you can use another auto, depending on your attack speed. And you're not going to get a lot of attack speed as misfortune anyways. So queuing and then autoing allows you to do something during that interim time. Whereas if you just queue and then you auto, then you're not going to have, you're going to have to wait that second, you know, in theory, before you can do anything else. Whereas if you auto, then queue, then that second has already been ticking while you do your queue animation and you're going to be able to auto again shortly thereafter. So it just fills in, it's like, it's just a better rotation to allow you to get another auto attack in faster because you're queuing while your auto attack animation is down. And then also they can't run out of your auto range because you auto and then Q and once you start the Q animation even if they flash it's going to go off um, so just make sure that you auto and then Q and then auto and that's kind of the trading pattern that you want in this fortune don't just walk up and Q unless you know it's going to be a kill shot or um, and they you're only going to get one shot at it or unless like you need to you desperately need a really cool bounce. Like, you need to bounce it to kill Bard. And if you auto first, then the Bard might reposition, so you're not going to get the same Q um, opportunity. But, you know, 90% of the time plus, you're going to want to auto and then Q. Unless, obviously, if you're bouncing it off of minions or something like that, sometimes if you can't get in an auto range, then you would just Q. But in terms of just walking up to somebody and you have a choice between auto attacking or queuing them, you know, you want to auto and then Q. Okay. Um, so you want to make sure that you get Quicksilver Sash, especially against Warwick, because... The Lulu's not going to be able to remove that. I mean, she can um, polymorph the Warwick, or I guess she can ult you and, like, knock him out of it. But you're just counting too much on the Lulu to help you out. She can't really do a lot against Vagar other than ult you. Um, but Quicksilver Sash is very nice, especially when we're comparing it to Death's Dance. Um... So if you look at Mercurial Scimitar, it's 65 AD, 10% lifesteal, 35 magic resist. Then removes, you know, crowd control, debuffs, all that stuff. Um, if we compare that to something like... Death's Dance... Similar cost, Death Stance is 100 cheaper. You do get 15 more attack damage there. The cooldown reduction is irrelevant because you're already going to have 40% from Black Cleaver, Dust Blade, and Ghost Blade. So that just doesn't matter. 
Healing for 15% of all physical damage dealt is nice, and the protection there is nice. But, um, I mean, that is going to offer you some protection against the Vagar All-In. Um, that's going to have a little bit more lifesteal on it. It's not going to have the magic resist. And just that extra, the ability to just get rid of the Vagar Stun or get rid of the Warwick Ult, it wasn't as relevant that game because Vagar never got enough to kill you. Um, but I still think that you want this Quicksilver Sash. A lot of times I'm really big on this item, and you know that, <laughs> watching. I think it should almost always be third or fourth item, especially if you're really far ahead and you just don't need extra damage. Like, you're already killing them so quickly that I just think that Quicksilver Sash is just a really huge deal, especially against things like Vagar, Morgana, Warwick, uh, Malzahar. You know, just a lot of these things that have a lot of really heavy crowd control, even if they have a Lulu or something or a Fiddlesticks, can be really, really powerful. Okay, I think that's about all I have for you. Um, I'm trying to remember, like, your macro was on point. You were doing the right thing most of the time. Um, the one macro thing that was kind of specific to this game that I think you could have optimized a little bit more is run to bot tower. Like you had a chance where maybe your team could have gone Baron if Zen left immediately, but because Zen stayed, as soon as he overstays, you gotta go get bottom inhibitor. You just gotta assume he's dead. I'm gonna get bottom inhibitor and then, or not bottom inhibitor, bottom tier two tower. And then I can rotate over and still defend Baron because just the threat of your ult means they can't go into that Baron pit. You know, you can just press ult and even if you don't kill them, you could get them so low that they're gonna have to like scatter. So, I think that was particularly, you know, something that you could have optimized. I think you were right to go top lane and push it, even though whatever, whoever on your team didn't understand why you were doing that. Um, you were close enough to Baron when you were pushing top, or you could rotate over to help him. And I think you made the right call to keep pushing, but then if they were, like, trying to force fights to rotate over, even though that was bad macro by your team, you had to do it, or they could have potentially died because you have all their gold. So I think that was a pretty good job of managing... Um, managing your power over time. There were a couple of ults that were maybe a little premature, but overall, I think it was a really good job. Um, you know, just work on these things. Use, move your control wards up. You know, if you have lane dominance, auto and then Q, get a quick silver sash, especially if you're really far ahead. And then um, as a smaller thing, there are a couple of minor macro things, but the big thing was rotate to bot tower after Zen suicides. And everything else, I, think, I thought your macro was really on point for most of the game. So anyways, that's going to be it. Thank you very much. As always, I really appreciate it. And I'll see you all next time.